One of the most important things you can do as a photographer, I think, is put down the title of, I am a professional photographer, or I have the answers, or I know the light where you will look best, or I, it's so boring and uninteresting. And there's so much more to be discovered by both. And it's not all about, let me show you what I see. Let me show you, let me show you. But when you are so deeply present in a situation, it's it's this, oh my gosh, I see something so beautiful and I want to show them. And also, I am so open to the moment revealing itself to me. It's not all about like, oh, I have all these skills and I uh, ways of seeing and here, let me grant this gift. It's this idea of stepping into your power as a creator of your life, of your art or whatever, but also being humbled and open to something far greater than you could ever envision. Help Me See is a podcast that redefines the word vision through vulnerable and real conversations, my own private introspective ramblings about the things that I think about in the wee hours of the morning, and my deep core belief that your nothingness is your everything, and all you have to do is see. I'm Bianca Mora, I'm your host. I am an educator, a photographic artist, and I believe that your daily photo habit can be the key to unlocking the ability to be more present in your everyday life and live deeper into your intention and purpose. We're not about the small talk here. Grab your coffee, get cozy, and let's talk. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of Help Me See. (sighs) Today, I want to talk about the conflicting feeling of when a decision gets made for us. Being someone that gets super overwhelmed by making decisions because I want to put so much care and attention into it, and then when I feel like I don't have that energy... I just avoid um, so that I can simmer and really think um, and honor that time to give that proper amount of reflection and energy to something. Um, That's just how I process things. But there's something to be said for how my very eloquent and poetic Italian New Yorker mother says, either shit or get off the pot. (laughs) Um, so basically I had been thinking about not renewing the lease of my studio just because it's been a little bit tight and I've been traveling so much. I haven't been there as much as I really wanted to. And even so the plan for that space had been originally to actually have people there for portrait sessions, but turns out I didn't really want anyone there except for myself. (laughs) <laughs> because all I do is go there to work in solitude, which is amazing. Um, but all that to say, I've been thinking about not upping, re-upping the lease. And when I finally got to my studio after being away for a while with travel, I got a slip saying that I'm not able to renew because uh, one of the businesses wants to take over the whole floor. So it's going to be all this one business. Um, and I have time and I also have the option to end earlier than, than planned, but, um, which is nice. But I was so emotional. I was like, Oh my gosh. Like, it felt like the universe nodding to me, but also the, the space is my first studio like official studio I painted it with my own two really unprofessional painter hands and I (laughs) I hung up my stuff and I oh every time I walk in there I take a deep breath and I love it so much and now of course I'm having all of that panic of 
what what can I do to make the most of my time here? But but really, that time could have been up at any time. Uh, you know, I'm always considering moving. Uh, but there's something about an outside force deciding something for you that feels both euphoric because, oh my gosh, one thing taken off your plate that you don't have to be the one to decide. But then on the other hand, it's absolutely horrifying and devastating because you don't have that the ownership of that decision. You don't have that control that we so desperately seek as human beings. Um, so while I know there's something really beautiful about it, it's also really painful. And as I was thinking about how interesting it was that I felt so intensely about this, uh, it made me think about our lives in general and the photographs we take and our photographic practice and how we have all the time in the world to meander and consider what we want our work to be or what we want our lives to be and how we would like to uh, create until we don't have all the time in the world. I'm not trying to be morbid here, but for many reasons, even a non-morbid reason, there are many situations in which all of a sudden the opportunities have changed or are different um, due to external forces. So while I'm not saying with haste, everything you do, decide, um, it's all going to be taken away. Uh, I am gently holding the and both in the situation. We can be very intentional and deliberate human beings without being paralyzed by it. It's possible. Although I end up in the latter camp very often. <sighs> Is there something that you have been marinating on that maybe you can take some action on? Is there something that you've been marinating on where you need to shit or get off the pot? <laughs> you know what? I think that there's definitely a market for um, like affirmations or like philosophy or the wisdom of a <laughs> New York Italian or a New York anything really. Um, Uh, I was editing some photographs from one of my most recent sessions that I am absolutely obsessed with. And it's all I want to do. Like all day, every day, all I want to do is be editing these photos and like going back in that world. And, um, I was looking at some of the pictures I took that are reflections um, through glass. And what's so friggin' interesting is that so many of them are so beautiful. And in that moment, I didn't really know what the fuck I was actually capturing because it was so, so bright and there was a lot going on and it was kind of like rapid fire. And then cut to me diving into the editing and you know, lifting the shadows and letting the image reveal itself. It's almost like I, I don't even take ownership of it. There's something that's so gorgeous about the idea that I needed to trust what I was capturing without seeing it. I couldn't see what I was doing, but I felt that something was there. And I think that that's how we're supposed to live our lives. We can't wait to see it, to have the proof, to have it all figured out before we make a move. 
and I'm looking at these photographs and I'm like, oh my God. Could you, if I was like, oh, this is too confusing. I can't, I can't see very well or whatever. And I just didn't continue. One of the most important things you can do as a photographer, I think, is put down the title of I am a professional photographer, or I have the answers, or I know the light where you will look best, or I, it's so boring and uninteresting. And there's so much more to be discovered by both. And it's not all about, let me show you what I see. Let me show you, let me show you. But when you are so deeply present in a situation, where you're also like, it's, it's this deeply caring, like, oh my gosh, I see something so beautiful and I want to show them. And also I am so open to the moment revealing itself to me. It's not all about like, oh, I have all these skills and I, uh, ways of seeing and here, let me grant this gift. It's also, we're coming together for something really pure and really beautiful. And yes, I will use my, my skill set and my purest best efforts to make something beautiful for you. But also if I over control and curate a situation, it's not honoring the sanctity of the moment. Uh, Yes, buddy. Yeah, baby. <laughs> We're sitting outside my kid's daycare. <laughs> I had to take my, my little one with me. We went to a, a bookstore. And I found some uh, discounted Andrew Wyeth um, books. I had watched a documentary on him. He's um, the painter. And oh my gosh, I was, it was a PBS documentary. If you haven't seen it, watch it. Even if you don't give a hoot about a painting or <laughs> I was, I was just rolled. Um, I'm very excited to now read this book and look at these paintings closer. Anyway, sidetrack. What was I saying? Is that something, this idea of stepping into your power as a creator of your life, of your art or whatever, but also being humbled and open to something far greater than you could ever envision is key. Yeah, right now I'm <laughs> finishing. <laughs> I laugh because I've been saying this for so long. Oh, the irony. I'm finishing my uh, photographic artist coursework and I'm trying to put some form of structure onto it to make it a little bit more digest- digestible um, while honoring um, the diversity of it and the openness of it, whatever. And I was coming up with a name for it. And I'm like, what is this really about? And I, 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 this came into my mind because I mentioned sanctity earlier. It's, it's a sacred vision. So that's, that's something that I'm going to be talking about in this course. It's empowering, expanding, and tapping into your own sacred vision that yes, has so much to do with you and your lived experiences and your passions and your, your everything, but it is also your ability to remain open to more and to be continually surprised. When I was in this last session, I was holding back tears. Like, I can't believe, like, I get to do this. It was, it, it feels like something brand new every single time I step into a container of a session. More to come on that. I need to, I need to pause here and grab my child. <laughs> okay, I'm back and wrapping up this episode. <laughs> I came home, I cooked dinner or let's be real. I basically reheated dinner and, um, I, to tie this up with a bow, I just had another experience with photographing a reflection. 
this time with my cell phone. I, um, we were cleaning up, um, Ben was trying to get the kids to get upstairs so they can take a tub, tubby and cash always stalls. And we always get really like, "Uh uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Um, but this time (laughs) he had a football in his hand and he goes, you still can't throw a football at me. (laughs) And Ben was like, well, uh, actually waited my whole life to hear that. (laughs) So so he just went outside and right on the deck and started tossing it back and forth. And it was so sweet. And I was just, you know, those times when you want to take a photo because you know how important it is, but you're just like, I'm just too tired. And that's 1000% fine and good. And I, there are so many things that I think, oh, I wish that I had the energy to get my camera right now because this is beautiful, but there is a certain specific different type of satisfaction in not taking the photo, but having that thought. Um, and I completely advocate for that as well, because it's really, it's not about the actual photo, but in this case, it just seemed so important that I peeled my ass out of the chair (laughs) and used my cell phone to take pictures and The one thing I wanted to point out in this one, it wasn't super bright out. It's, it's almost dark. So there wasn't a lot of glare. I could see what I was doing. It was different because it was a cell phone and not my camera. Um, and I had been trying to take just a wide shot of them tossing the ball. And I was like, I don't know. It just didn't feel like the photo didn't feel like how sweet it felt like. I don't know if you could hear him screaming right now. This is what bath time sounds like in my house. So if you can hear crazy yelling, then. It sounds like he's doing the Star Wars theme song as Kermit the Frog or something. Um, Anyway, so (laughs) it it just, the the picture wasn't matching the feel of it. So then I ended up seeing their reflection in the sliding glass window. And then my littlest was pounding on the door trying to come out (laughs) and capturing it that way, even though it wasn't as like a straight shot of what was actually happening it was a little bit more whimsical, a little bit more poetic that actually felt more of like what it felt like, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, I don't know exactly why I'm sharing this. I think I'm sharing it because I really believe in loosening up our photographic practice. I believe that the looser we get with it and the more, Oh my God. Can you stop? (laughs) oh my god this is a different kind of episode anyway the looser we get with it the more there is for us to discover all the time I mean I've been doing this for I don't even know I haven't even taken the time to think about when I started or how long it's been but I started when I was in high school and going to punk rock concerts um and I'm still absolutely flabbergasted by what gifts are available to us when we just move with instinct, trust our intuition, um, push where we feel it's right to do so and back off and give it space when we feel like it as well. Um, there's so much wisdom to be learned and (sighs) it's my favorite thing in the world to talk about. Um, I'm going to wrap it here. If this conversation strikes your fancy, Um, Feel free to join us for our free weekly co-working called Photo Yoga. Um, It's a very, (laughs) speaking of loosen your photographic practice, it's, I liken it to a photo or yoga practice, which is why I call it Photo Yoga. We edit, we ask questions, we talk about theory, what's going on for anyone that shows up. Um, Sometimes I share screen, sometimes I don't, whatever, whatever the moment calls for is what it is. Um... And if you want to be notified when my course for your photographic um, practice launches, then sign up at the link in the show notes. All right, that's it. I'm really um, falling off here. I have a really messy kitchen to clean and a podcast episode to edit. Okay. I hope this was helpful. I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your day. Um, 
if there's ever a time where you take a photo um, because a pot, one of these episodes inspired you to do so, I would be so honored if you tagged me or left a review on um, on iTunes, however that works. Apparently that helps other people find find the show and spread the love. All right. There she blows. Love you guys. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and want to get in on actual conversations with me, join the Help Me See podcast private Facebook group. Every Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'll be hopping on live for Q&A on the latest episode and for free consulting if you need a bit of help thinking about ways to save your memories. Did you get something out of this episode? I really, really, really hope you did. And I would love to hear from you. I'm on a mission to empower you to feel peace knowing that you are not missing your life. One of the best ways that you can support me is leaving a review. And honestly, I'd rather hear about the memory you saved because of this podcast rather than any kind of accolade. Tell me how this podcast has impacted you. And one, I'll probably cry. (laughs) And two, I'd love to give you a shout out on the show. Take a minute and head out to the link in the bio to write a review now on the podcast.